if you look at what an age friendly environment who has a whole decade you know dedicated to older people on trying to create age friendly environments uh, there are very few countries in the world that have achieved that but it's worth looking into those are opportunities to create you know workspaces uh, revenue for people who are looking for jobs we keep complaining we have no jobs but are we thinking outside the box have we looked at the population that's going to be a majority of our population the and what resources years. we are giving them in the next 20 years by 2050 will have doubled in older people a retirement age needs to be abolished with retirement should come when a person is physically unable for example in ireland at 70 you, there's no upper limit for a driving license but in after 70 you need to be tested to check your driving license annually or every 3 years then you know you assess here is there anyone looking out that is that 70 year old okay to drive uh, yes. reduce the risk of them having an accident doing but do we have laws governing that the eyesight is going to eyesight diminishing is part of normal aging yeah. hearing diminishing is part of normal yeah. aging but why do we say somebody being an angry old man is part of normal and aging why is that you know you will heard it a lot of time he's just an angry old man that's just how he is yeah. have you ever wondered why a happy person <laughs> would suddenly become angry are they not then having problems are they in pain there's some problem are they going through a dementia are they going through a depression are they isolated what's making them change behavior hello viewers and welcome to lucemoria network once again it's a beautiful morning and i told you we are changing lives our show is about everyone we inspire we educate and give information we are literally our prescription is taking care of issues affecting the older persons in our country and also about single parenthood so should you have a story related to the same or you can give any information kindly you are welcome to our show and share with kenyans and today is a day we do have a very special doctor barely or rarely found in africa or in kenya these are doctors that take care of the older people so we have a geriatric practitioner i think the whole country there are two of them the whole country we just have the two of them and she's going to tell us more about it who is this who is a geriatric practitioner we do have pediatric doctors for children we do have oncology doctors for cancer we have all the specialists but this geriatric practitioner doctor they are very very rare and our guest today is going to tell us more about it and doctor how are you Lucy I'm very well welcome to the show thank you and introduce yourself um, and tell Kenyans and the viewers all over the world who you are. Okay, my name is Dr. Tasnim Yamani. I'm a geriatric uh, GP. What uh, that means basically Lucy is people who are above the ages of 60 or 65 depending on regions, they come under that ca- category of geriatrics. So we take care of that age group. So the way you have children from 0 to 18 under the pediatric bracket, okay, 0 to 14 depending on where you are. This is 60 and 65 above. Anything above that is under the geriatric uh, specialty. Um more about that is the idea of older persons is to take care of them holistically. We look into all their needs. Uh it's not only about physical health, it's mental, social, nutritional, psychological, uh spiritual, financial because well-being in older age is slightly different from what well-being would mean to the age i am at or you are at for that matter and aging is a process that is beginning at birth when we are zero we start aging from that minute but after 40 aging becomes a little more progressed it's faster so we age our body starts going on a downward trend after 40 45 so we have to prepare for the ages where our bodies are slowing down what to do how to do and when we are in that space how to take care of ourselves that's what geriatric medicine is all about wow i am sure most of our viewers maybe except me 
they barely, they don't even know. They've never heard about a doctor who is specific for the older people. We have taken the older people in our countries like for, for granted. granted. Yes. We think it is automatically when you age, you're supposed just to age. It doesn't matter how you age. Although aging, of course, increasingly like in developed countries is paramount. Now, this course, where did you study? Now, unfortunately, there is no geriatric course for doctors in the country. The few people who have studied gerontology have all done it abroad. Gerontology is a slightly different side from geriatrics. <coughs> Excuse me. Geriatrics is the medical side of it. Gerontology is a social side of older person. But they work hand in hand all the time. We do have a couple of gerontologists in the country, but they've all studied abroad because the course is not offered in our country. Personally, I'm also studying it with the Royal College of Physicians, Ireland. Ireland? Ireland, yes, in Ireland. The closest you could probably get any geriatric training in Africa would be South Africa, but they're also reviewing their module right now for foreign students. So it's not really an accessible thing as we speak at this moment, but they're working on it. So you have to fly out to learn geriatric medicine because even in medical school, it's not part of our core components. And I think that's why people don't understand that geriatric medicine is a specialty field. And <clears throat> as it's known now, we're going towards an aging population. What that means is in the next 20 or so years, we'll have more people age 60 and above compared or in comparison to the younger children because why that is happening is there was a point where there was a baby boom. So everyone had children who are growing. Now we are in that age where we are heading towards that age of 60. And now children are less. Families are growing smaller. So people are living longer. Families are growing smaller. So the general overall population of the world globally, it's not only Kenya, is of an aging population. More older people will be existent over the younger population. How? Which means their needs need to really be understood who they are, what they are, how they are, because they're not just old adults. They're a unique group. Just the way children are not young adults. Yeah. You can't say a 1 to 14-year-old is a young adult. They're children. They're special. They have, their bodies are different. Yes. Physiologically, they're very different from an 18-year-old going on. Same way, a 65-year-old's body is very different from a 42, 40-year-old person physiologically. There are changes that are happening as we are aging on a biological level, on a cellular level. So having all those changes happening physically means our needs at that age are also changing, which is what is not understood or explored into, especially in our country. Wow. And there's a lack of awareness. So most people think even old people just see regular doctors. There's a specialty field for it. And unfortunately, that is not an existing entity. Wow. as we speak right now in the country. Wow. Viewers, you can hear that. Aging starts from the day you <coughs> are born. For those you think, I've had a lot of questions people ask me, Lucy, why are you doing this? Why are you bothered about older people? You are not an older person. What I would say, and why I'm bringing people like Dr. Tasnin, it's because we need to understand that this is a different entity. This is something different that we need to start taking care of our older people. And it's not just about medicine. It's not just about food. There is more to that. Dr. Tari, why do you think, from your experience, why do you think this blackout is there and that even not in we have a lot of uh, learning institutions from nairobi university ku all these main learning institutions in kenya and we do not have such courses what would be the problem i think in my opinion it's more of a lack of awareness and the you know old people have always been viewed in the past with an ageist you know approach when I say ageist, a lot of people don't even know what ageism is. ageism. Let's start there. Just the way we have racism, we have ageism. It's discrimination based on age. So when we have old people, people assume that after a certain age, there's a certain expectation. They won't do A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z. And it's kind of put as a stereotypical thing attached to age, which is not true. Because we all age uniquely. 
no older person has a one one shoe fits all formula for anything they do yeah. so a 70 year old in your house is not the same as the 70 year old in mine it's all dependent on genetics is a contributing environment. factor environment yeah. health uh, social you know isolation or whether they're integrated socially into the communities all that changes how the 70 year old in an isolated rural area, urban area will age compared to one in a different environment. So it's very individualistic. Now, because that understanding has not been there and old people are just assumed to be older adults, no one really sat and thought about geriatric medicine being a speciality. It's always been a speciality, but it's not really focused upon because, again, even our life expectancy has changed. People used to live up to 60 at some point. Being 60 was old. Today, being 80 is old. Because life expectancy, better nutrition, better health care, all that has changed. So because it's been a dynamic change, the awareness has not followed through. The creation of that awareness is not there. So even as when I graduated from medical school in 2006, geriatrics was not part of our core components. Very recently, the nursing schools here have now put in geriatric nursing as part of one of their core components. You know, And it's slowly coming around. I'm not saying that... Nobody's doing anything. But still in med school, geriatrics as a speciality, we have orthopedics, we have pediatrics, we have ENT, we have all specialities, even subspecialities. But geriatric medicine is not a specialty offered within our country as it stands. So if we don't have practitioners who then is letting patients or people know that this is a specialized field, where do we start? How do we integrate the younger people to understand that they're also aging and as they age, they need to take care of aging people. We all have parents. So we are always going to be in that dynamic. Either you're a child, a parent, or a grandparent. But the in-between person is taking care of the older person. But we never see ourselves getting there. Because when we're in our life in the 30s and 40s, we're so busy chasing a career, chasing a life, family, whatever it is we're chasing. We forget one day we'll be in that category. So we, we kind of sideline. They have really been put on the sidelines. There's lots of associations now that are there trying to recreate awareness, but I still think it's not enough because old people are still categorized in a category. They are old, there are certain things they're expected to do, and they're unable to do certain things. And that discrimination is where the fact that there's this lack coming around from. Dr. Sazanin. I know, despite being of Asian origin, you are a Kenyan who grew up here in Kenya, and uh, maybe your culture is almost like any other culture here. Mm -hmm. What really motivated you to this? You know, uh, when I became a doctor, there were many things I wanted to explore. At some point, I wanted to do pediatrics. At some point, I was like, I don't know whether I want to do clinical medicine. I was going through my phases. I came across a conference, the first time I ever heard of geriatrics, even that after being a qualified doctor for about four years, four years post-internship. Yeah. There was a conference that happened with Help Age. They had uh, the South Africa Geriatric Society does annual conferences, and they did that one for the first time here in Africa. And that's where I came across. And for me, it was I was in a job. It was a day out of a few days away from yeah. work. Let's take it and let's go. But when I went there, I realized, wow, there's a field like geriatrics. There's something that you can do that's different for aged people. There's a gap. The gap was so loud during that three-day conference that I attended that I was like, my goodness, why has nobody said that we can do this? Why don't I even know it? Maybe it's my own ignorance. And you're already a medical doctor. And I'm already a doctor. But just the way I'm ignorant, I'm sure there were many who were ignorant at that time. Even as I interact with my colleagues even now, the the ignorance around geriatrics is still there. And it's sad because as doctors, if we don't acknowledge it, how do we then expect patients to acknowledge it's a speciality? So that conference opened up my eyes. It was like a slap of, wow, we have a huge gap. And this I'm looking at about what I have been practicing for now close to 17 years. So we're looking at such a long time ago when the gap wasn't as wide as it is now. And over the years, I decided this is where my passion lies. Wow. I started with what really pushed me is taking care of my family, direct family, who we lost, but that even made that gap louder on how older people are not cared for correctly. They're not given the unique attention that they deserve on the medical side. 
which made me really drive towards advocacy for older person healthcare. And when I got into the healthcare space of older people, I realized older people are not only about healthcare. When you're doing healthcare for them, it has to be holistic. It cannot be just about the medicines they take, the medical conditions they suffer from. It's about looking at their overall well-being because their well-being impacts their health. And there are much more, many more factors than just physical health when you're taking care of older people. People would wonder why a doctor is going to start talking about finances in their consultation for an older person. But because finances play a big role on the psychological burden they go through, which in turn affects their physical health, it becomes a vicious cycle. People wonder why I would ask questions about spirituality when I'm talking about older people. Like when I have a consultation, these are the areas I'll cover. So most, a lot of times people be like, but what does the person's spirituality have to do with their ailing condition? And that's when you realize somebody has been taken away from the church group that they were so used to because they grew old or they had dementia or something kind of limiting them. And that led to them feeling socially isolated. The social isolation led to a depressive illness. If a patient was at risk of dementia, the depression kind of pushes that risk a little more. With that comes a whole lot of problems. Then they stop eating well, so we have nutritional problems. If they are unwell, they stop taking their medications, which complicates their already existing med You see, it becomes a whole cycle. Yeah. So that's the part people do not have the awareness of how it interrelates together. And therefore, tying it together is a geriatric job. You have a cardiologist taking care of old people. You'll have a diabetologist or an endocrinologist. You'll have somebody doing physical therapy for them. But if all of these people are not tied together, patients are being taken care of in silos. So one human being is being taken care of as though there are five different separate, yet all of those relate. Then we have end, ending up with problems with medication, polypharmacy, which leads to nutritional problems as well, which leads to depression as well. There's a lot that is interrelated at play. So having a multidisciplinary team, and who ties that together? The geriatric practitioner wow. or the family doctor. Wow. But even our family doctors or the GPs are not so well versed with geriatrics because of the lack of awareness. Again, we'll have CMEs for every condition. Like as doctors, we attend continuous medical education. We have CMEs for everything, but nobody does CMEs even in the pharma space, they're not thinking about CMEs for geriatrics. How do we tie the care together? So you, you, you see, these are where the challenges and gaps are. Uh, younger doctors are going into specialities. Today, everyone wants to be a cardiologist, everyone wants to be a surgeon, everyone wants to be an obstetrician. Very few want wow. to be a geriatrician. Why? Maybe a lack of understanding of what they are. Passion, and I think geriatrics is one field, just like pediatrics. You really have to be passionate about it because they're very unique. Yeah. Like dealing with children can sometimes, you know, we look at pediatricians and wonder how they do it. Yeah. It's the same way with geriatrics. You need a lot them. of patience, a lot of empathy, a lot of compassion. And you need to give it time. You can't have a geriatric consultation in five minutes. It will take at least 30 minutes on the fastest possible side. Yeah. And 30 is even when you're saying it's somebody who's known to you as a patient. But for a new patient, you need at least an hour to, to 90 minutes them. to understand. For them and most to open of them, up to you. For them to create that time where they are comfortable. Yeah. It takes a lot. And for them to be very comfortable to open up about their health problems, their psychological problems, for you to break through to make them gain that trust. Because by the time they're at that age, they're very tired as well. So, Dr. Tari, Thank you so much for that explanation. And with all this kind of ignorance, like our people, even the doctors themselves don't know. If you were to look at the camera and talk to the young people, maybe you would be thinking of, of choosing that as a career. Would you talk about what geriatric practitioner entails? What does it take if you were to take it? What is it all about? Being a geriatric practitioner is all about taking care of older people, as we said. What it entails is a holistic approach. You need to understand a bit about everything. So it's more like, it's like a GP, but in a specialized way with older person physiology, how an older person's body is changing, what are those changing, what kind of medications would work for those changes, what kind of things you need to think about with the process, what is part of normal aging, because sometimes we assume everything is part of normal aging. But there are certain things that are, like for example, when we see behavior changes in older adults, 
we assume that somebody aging not realizing it could be a medical condition so trying to differentiate between what is normal aging what is healthy aging what is pathological aging pathological aging is basically when you're aging with a disease that is impacting how your body is going to react to different things so it entails that area of medicine and for the younger people who are in medicine or trying to think about what masters they would want to pursue when they finish geriatrics is a field that has to really make you think outside the box because old people don't follow textbook so how an older person would present with an infection would not be with a fever and things that you typically expect they may just go into a shock and you find somebody in what we call septic shock that's shock because of infection and you're like why did we not pick it up because nobody noticed them being more drowsy not eating getting confused losing sleep behaving strangely because when old people do that it's automatically assumed they're just being difficult old people that label needs to change and when we have a better understanding of how their bodies are physiologically working we understand better what to expect oh thank you and when we talk about geriatric care geriatric field and it's not just about the geriatric practitioners those are the doctors we also need nurses we also need assistant nurses we all need and many people we also need psychologists we also That's need we said that yeah it's holistic so we all need all those so guys this is a field which actually has not been exploited even for those who want it as a career uh doctor would you tell us some of the opportunities in this field There's so many. It would be, I don't think we can even finish that conversation. Let's, if we look at medicine itself, there is geriatric <coughs> doctors, there is geriatric physiotherapists, there are geriatric orthopedic specialists. Like orthopedics has a sub in other countries, not ours, mm -hmm. where the orthopedic doctor is a geriatric orthopedic doctor because again, when it comes to bone health. they change when they have a fracture what you do for a younger person is not what you do for an older person because you're looking at you're looking at quality of life you're looking at functionality you're looking at whether you gain functionality or lose functionality you're looking at a functional outcome in geriatric medicine at core you have to think about functional outcome what is it going to give you is it going to improve the quality of life or not because increasing qu quantity of life has no value if it has no quality in it and that's what geriatric medicine is about so you have all sorts of fields physiotherapy nutrition um exercise <coughs> you look at other places on the social aspect of uh, geriatric medicine and gerontology in the so social spaces it's about creating opportunities for older people there in itself is a vast <coughs> area where it comes to where if we talk about exercise people should open gyms for that are specialized to older people people should open social spaces like restaurants that are geriatric friendly recreation recreational you know leisure activities that are older person friendly art music you see we have all that for young people all of us will go to a place where we can listen to music we can interact with them. but for old people do those spaces exist it's a non existing entity especially If you look at what an age friendly environment WHO has a whole decade you know dedicated to older people on trying to create age friendly environments uh there are very few countries in the world that have achieved that but it's worth looking into those are opportunities to create you know work spaces uh revenue for people who are looking for jobs we keep complaining we have no jobs but are we thinking outside the box have we looked at the population that's going to be a majority of our population the and what resources years. we are giving them in the next 20 years by 2050 will have doubled in older people we are already in 2024 in the next 25 years uh, is anyone putting up the foundation of having an age friendly environment a dementia village um recreational hubs for old people transport hubs for old people so many things can be done and it doesn't always have to be done I mean the government needs to really start looking into it. But where is the private sector coming? The private sector may have the resource and be able to earn from it, create jobs from it. But for that you need people to be trained, skilled. Because you can't just set up a center and not have an understanding of your clientele. Do we have people who have salons for old people? Because you going to the salon and an older person are two different experiences. 
we may go to the salon to get our hair done, do our nails, enjoy the chit chat. An older person may require a different kind of environment to enjoy the same experience. So it has to really be thought out of what are you trying to give them, what are the needs, what are the unique... You know, it's old people, why do they not like self-care? Because it becomes so much of a problem for them to get there. The logistics, the noise, maybe the noise irritates them. Maybe there's certain Transportation things that modes. just the environment is yeah. not, they'll think about it's a slippery floor, there are stairways there, I can't access it, so we'll just not go. So all those things have to, you see, it goes far beyond the practice of just medicine. So out of this, um, out of this ignorance, we've seen that talking about only, almost only two or none in the country, a practitioner, to deal with the geriatric issues. If you look at that camera, what would you like maybe even our government to understand or to know about that? To start with, awareness is key. You see, if we have awareness, interest will come. Interest comes people who are pursuing either the medical field or the social field or any field will start thinking along the lines of geriatrics. The schools that we have, we have so many commendable, highly recognized schools in the country, uh, or postgraduate schools, medical schools. Why then are they not offering this as a, as a, you know, a field of medicine of that course. should be there? It should be a course offered. For me, it's taken me this long to set my foot here because of the lack of it. I had to look online. The cost of online studies are quite high. So for, for you know, when you're at an age where you're doing your master's and all, cost is always a factor. So yeah. you can't pursue it. It's mm. taken me a good 17 years to finally get to where I wanted to be with you. I mean, and, and not where within. I am. And it's also not within. But if it was within, I would have probably been able to achieve it a lot earlier and started making this difference earlier. The same way younger students are coming out, a lot of them cannot afford to fly out to start. And we all know, once we go away, people don't usually come back. They come back later. Uh, and from what I've seen in the Kenyan culture, we have a very beautiful country. We have a really, a country that has so much resource when it comes to people care, the culture we live in. A lot of Kenyans will go away, leave the country, go to the diaspora, but for retirement they come back home. But when yeah. they come back home, what do they have? They have the caregivers, yes, who are domestic workers. But do those domestic workers have the skill it requires to take care of an ailing older person or help an older person get the supportive environment they require? And those are the areas where we really, really need to put pressure on both the private public sector to increase trainings, education, workshops, even on an individual level. As an individual, if you are aware, you will look for the service, creating the demand for the service. And there automatically comes people wanting to, you know, that creates its own interest itself and people will want to then pursue that field. Both on a financial side, on a career path, on a give back to society, because there are only so many people who can volunteer their time. And funny enough, older people who are well in good health can still be the same volunteers for other older people. But we sideline them by discriminating the too old to do something. Why do we not tap into the resource that older people are? Especially when they're in a functional space. They can still... Why do we have a retirement age? A retirement age needs to be abolished with. Retirement should come when a person is physically unable. For example, in Ireland, at 70, you, there's no upper limit for a driving license. But in, after 70, you need to be tested to check your driving license annually or every three years. Then, you know, you assess. Here, is there anyone looking out that, is that 70-year-old okay to drive? Uh, yes. Reduce the risk of them having an accident. Doing but do we have laws governing that? that we are not saying stop them from driving, but let's take care of them so they're not at risk. Let's make sure they're given the opportunity. And they're not discriminated. And they're not discriminated. Yeah. Why is it that we don't have those kind of governance places? Do we not think that older people after a certain age may need help with certain tasks? May also need to be checked because eyesight is going to... Eyesight diminishing is part of normal aging. Yeah. Hearing diminishing is part of normal yeah. aging. But why do we say somebody being an angry old man is part of normal and aging? Why is that? You know, you heard it a lot of times. He's just an angry old man. That's just how he is. Yeah. Have you ever wondered why a happy person <laughs> would suddenly become angry? 
are they not then having problems are they in pain there's some problem are they going through a dementia are they going through a depression are they isolated what's making them change behavior why would you not want to look into it except just put a label and leave it there and blame them and blame them for being difficult yet they're not why do we not understand that all the people when they slow down it's part of a normal process but how do we help them not slow down how do we encourage them to maintain muscle something called sarcopenia loss of muscle how do we prevent it because it can be pre- yes there are those areas that you can't prevent things but how do you give them the best opportunity with health if they had somebody would educate them about exercise and building muscle the more you build your muscle or strengthen it the less it depreciates over time yes it will you know get wasted away but you preve- you lengthen that process so you're giving them better quality for longer where they can still be active how many old people just sit in the house because of joint pains and body pains not because they are not functional but the pain is too much to bear so why do we not prevent why do we wait for it to happen and then we to know try it to come and knowing we cannot cure why not try and avoid what you can or strengthen what you can and that starts with the ages of 40 And that's why I said I'm a geriatric GP. The GP aspect comes in in the areas for the 40, 45 year olds. It's very important for them to understand. See your doctors. Let them have your history because you journey with your medical practitioner. Just having specialists is not enough. Specialists are a referral form, which is again an area of medicine in our country that is very If we don't have a referral system. Everyone will just walk into any office not knowing then the specialist has to do work. that in their work burden also increased so that referral system of you have your doctor journey with you guiding you where you should go not ending up using resources in the wrong spaces a lot of people are on supplements which are not required i know you know that's where the nutritional aspect comes in why are we wasting money on supplements here the person may not be nutritionally deprived but who did the assessment did the dietitian see them that those are the areas where i'd like I feel that the government the private sector can come in and really push on those agendas because they change the care we as younger people are getting towards the aging days you know I think the only issue with the government and what they need to do remember two months ago we were discussing about uh, the guidelines yes. the, policies. the policies we don't have any policy regarding older persons in the country and uh, like you said even private uh, i mean private developers private people would like to do all these things but where is the guideline if you start a home if you start a village for the dementia people who is guiding, who is guiding, who is guiding you, you the rules? who is who's giving you the what rules is needed? what is needed is the model who is protecting you even as a doctor True. you see there's so many gaps these are all yeah. gaps that but they're ga- they're not gaps that can't be addressed they're real they're existing it's just a matter of prioritizing them yes. i don't think i think that's the biggest problem all the people are not being prioritized and in that process nobody really is giving the place the due what would you call it um the opportunity it requires and the opportunity is for everybody so if you're a business minded person you just need to open up your eyes and see all the people are probably a very good business opportunity not as a material object but in what they can that utilize area. because we don't give them that service It's not existing but if it were they would utilize they it. They utilize it. Same way for all areas where they exercise restaurants, movie theaters, everything. And it's not that old people don't enjoy life. They do given the cre- the right environment. Social, cultural, geographical, all of it has to be corrected. So viewers here you hear that we need holistic holistic cover for our old people. to our government we still need the policies and the guidelines to be able to do to achieve all these what doctor is talking about for us to have our own doctors our own nurses our own caregivers trained in our local schools we need these guidelines the doctor in those homes need the protection the care person the older person themselves the, the directly affected they need those guidelines they need to be protected we have had cases where we never had 
any protection, any guideline for the older person. Those who are taking care of them, they also need to be protected. And that's why we need the policy. That's why we need the senior citizen bill to be passed as soon as possible. When these things are being talked about, or the other bills you have been talking about, please let us prioritize for the first time our older people by prioritizing our senior citizen bill. It's already now seated at the, the ministry, and we would like, please, just fa make it fast, take it to parliament, and we want to see it working. There are many people out here who are really eager to do things and they want even outside the country want to support but we need guidelines prioritize our senior citizen bill uh doctor you are part of that you formulated yes. the bill together so and i think that is the biggest gap that we have we have people even who have money who can do things on this now being among the two or the fewest practitioners in the country on issues matters older persons are you privately practicing or you are practicing for our government i have a private practice it's a hospital based in the eastern bypass just next to ruru uh -huh. it's called hamat healthcare it's called hamat healthcare hamat healthcare yeah. the one of the reasons not the only one of the reasons for setting up that is to create a geriatric center it is what we are working on it is part of the things we would like to provide. Um, when you go to hospital, are senior citizens given priority? Is there a unit that takes care of older people? No. The idea behind Hamat Healthcare, among giving services to other specialties in field, is also to create that space where older people have a space they know they can be coming, be seen without a wait time, to be seen as a priority, their needs being understood as an older person not just as an old adult, the unique needs. So the geriatric center or having a geriatric uh, unit is part of what... Even in our existing hospitals. Even our existing hospitals. Now, at least I've seen a lot of hospitals providing the home care option of things. But again, who is doing it? Is it monitored? Is it regulated? Is it somebody who understands what older people needs? Or are we just doing home care for everyone and anyone? just as an arm of providing home services for convenience. I personally, based uh, through Hamat Healthcare, do a lot of home care because a lot of my patients are unable and seeing patients who are older in a home environment gives you so much more uh, information because you can do an environmental survey which is impacting the health. You can do a social survey which are all part of the geriatric assessment. Something called a comprehensive ger geriatric assessment has some core areas. Nutrition, mobility, environment, social environment, uh, spiritual environment, sexual orientation of the patients, meaning when I say sexual, because again, this is a sensitive <coughs> thing, but people assume when people are elder, yeah. they don't need their spouses, but they'll sleep in two different rooms. Why would you separate a married couple? Do you not feel their needs are they are also human. Assessed. They need, I mean, just because they're old, their sexual um, needs are slightly more different, but they're still existing. They yeah. still need to be together. We find a lot of families separating parents because of the, like, the ability to care. So one parent will be with one child, the other with the other. Do you not feel that you've separated two people and taken away? So all those areas come under what we call the CGA, the emotional well-being. So that we know what teams are needed. Do we need a social worker checking in? Do, we, do those patients need a healthcare assistant taking care of them? Are they able to carry out their basic activities of daily living or the higher levels instrumental activities? Those are specific to a person being functional. Are they, do they need a physical you know, therapist coming in to help them exercise or mobilize? Do they need an occupational therapist helping them cope with the condition they may be suffering. People who have had strokes, they may have a chance of rehab, but just because they're elderly, we say, there's no hope. Do we, did we try to alert? Are they having a nutritional review regularly? Are we screening for depression? Because depression gets is one of the most mis- or underdiagnosed uh, illnesses in older people. And uh, and it is a very highly prevalent condition in older people. Uh -huh. Dementia itself, is also miss, missed in the early stages 
And you see, these are all conditions. If picked early, quality of life can be changed immensely just by an early diagnosis. So all these screenings, vaccinations for older people, because when they get vaccinated, hospital admissions are reduced. We don't say they're not going to get sick. They'll just get a less severe form of it, yeah. which helps them stay healthy because rehabilitation and recuperation for older people is a slightly lengthier process. So when they're recuperating, they're already in a reserve that is limited. As we grow older, our energy reserves are being depleted. And because of that, we are living on very little reserve. Now when we get ill, that reserve is really pulled into, in our physiological reserves. So that leaves a patient with less to recuperate faster. And they may not even recuperate fully. So we want to avoid all that. Why put strain on an already limited reserve of functional capacity and physiological capacity for wow. people? So Dr. Tari, how of your individual amplifying for the needs of the older people in that area as a practitioner, um, how is the response? Have you seen people have started understanding about it? Are they responding? And like how many people do you see in a day or in a week? Um, through conversations of the one I'm having with you, I have seen a big uptake in that. I have had a lot of new patients coming in looking for this service, asking about it, coming even all the way from Meru, Muranga, Kisumu, coming all the way here just to have their parents checked on. Um, they request for teleconsults as well. Again, that's also, you see, in incorporating, we didn't mention this, but it's come up, yeah. in incorporating technology into older person medicine is so important. There is so much assistive technology available in the world. But in our country, it is something for the rich. It is not available for the local, middle class, lower end Kenyan. Anything that could, imp assistive technology is basically anything, processes or systems or devices to enable a better quality of life yeah. for older people. Whether it's from basic things like a walking cane, cane or a wheelchair or reading a glasses to sensors to prevent for falls or sensors for people with dementia from getting lost or safety devices or drug monitoring orientation clocks to simple things. I mean, what is really available? Even a wheelchair for an older person in our country is a very expensive resource for a person who may need it that may just allow them the ability to be socially engaged. Wow. So things like that are where we say assistive technology and technology at a large can be put into place where systems are set where we can remotely monitor patients. You don't have to have me physically see you if I know you. Once I know my patient, then I'm able to remotely monitor yeah. to prevent things. So you're picking things earlier and you don't Before let it get to a point where more. they end up in a hospital. It reduces the hospital burden, financial burden. Uh, because when an older person goes to hospital, they may be admitted for a three-day thing, but they'll end up staying 10. Why? Because the immunity is low. They will pick up they things in the hospital. More. They may get bed sores. They don't get a one-on-one -on -one care. They get depressed because they're out of the familiar environment. So many things at play that lengthen that stay. On our health burden, it increases the health burden of admissions of older people. They're just occupying beds where they may not have needed to in the first place. Do you feel like the guidelines could be limiting your... I feel so. I feel the guidelines on older person care are not really... If they're there, they have not been shared enough. And if they've been shared, they may not be concise enough. They really need to be looked into, be very specific, very understood, very tailor-made to every aspect of well-being, not just physical health, not just medical conditions, not just the NCDs or the cancer care or the palliative care. When we talk about palliative care, so many older people don't know what an advanced directive is. So many younger people don't know what an advanced directive is. If we have those in place, it takes up so much burden of families and patients because they already know what they wanted, how they would want their life to be directed. Medical practitioners don't have to sit and wreck their brains to figure out what is the best thing because patients' best interest should always come first. Wow. But we're also tied down by this is what we need to do. I can't just leave a patient who's had a heart attack. But if I had an advanced directive that should this happen to me, this is how far I want to go. 
It helps me, guys, because even whether you're 80 or 90, I cannot discriminate you for medical help at its best. But shared decision-making, shared information, informed consent, advanced directives, all play a very big role in those discussions you have with the family and the patient when they have capacity for those discussions. And should they lose capacity for any reason, those decisions are already in place. Wow. Who better to guide them? I mean, you need legal advice. So there you go, another framework. How many legal people look at advanced directives for older persons? And advanced directives are very health-related directives. Wow. They're, not, they're different from a, live, a will. They're a living will. On should anything happen health-wise, this is what I would want. So it's, it's a legal document, and it has to be respected. Of course, it can be changed, but very few people even know this is something that you can do for your parents. Or a par me as an individual, as a 40-year-old, don't know I can do it. So how do I prepare for my 60 when I don't even know it exists? Impossible. And we say advanced directives should be done from the point where you understand what you want. Because you don't know, you could be in an accident. Anything, life is dynamic, anything can happen. What would you want for yourself? Is that not clear for you to have? I would like my kids not to have the burden on them to worry about what should we do. Because it gets very stressful. Yeah. The guilt of saying, we are not taking her to hospital. But if it was very clear, I do not want to go. They are happier knowing they're giving me what I want. Just because I'm ill doesn't mean my emotional well-being is not there. It doesn't mean I can't feel. I may not be able to communicate. For example, the dementia patient. Just because they can't communicate cognitively doesn't mean they don't have feelings. And uh -huh. their feelings are maintained. Emotions are not diminished. They still feel emotional. They just can't uh, communicate it and relate it. So if something's happening that they don't like, they're unhappy, but they can't tell you. But if you knew what makes them happy, you'd be doing it for them without them saying it. Having a much better quality of life, even with dementia, for example. There's so much that can be wow. talked about. As we wind up, Dr. Sasmin, if you look at the camera, maybe you would tell Kenyans or viewers where is viewing you today if they were to look for you for some advice. As we wait for the guidelines and the policies from our government, where would they find you? They would find me at Hamak Healthcare, and I'm happy to share my number because I'm accessible on my mobile 24 hours, 7 days, all the time. Even when I'm not around, I'm always available. Go ahead. 0722-841-819. That's the best number to catch me on at any time. Thank you so much, viewers. And thank you for continuing support and subscribing. Continue subscribing and sharing so that you don't miss episodes like this. And please, if you get any of these videos, because they're educative, they're inspiring, and they give information, don't forget to share with your family members, with your network and friends. It might not be for you, it could be for somebody else that you know. Kindly do that and we are going to appreciate so much. Dr. maybe next time we come and visit your hospital and see the center, what you do. Yes, that would be good. Okay, okay. otherwise, thank you, thank you, thank so you very much, much for thank your you time. Thank you for this conversation, yes. it's a very important one. Yes, thank, thank you, you very much. <laughs>